This is a review of the 1972 film The Effect of Gamma Rays on Man in the Moon Marigolds, which is directed by Paul Newman and stars Joanne Woodward. They were married at the time. It also stars Nell Potts, also known as Nell Newman, who was their daughter, and uh, Barbara Wallach, who was the daughter of Eli Wallach. So an interesting cast and in some ways a family movie. It also is quite literally a family movie about a single mother, um, and her two daughters, uh, their life in sort of a dour, um, rundown house, and their daughters' experiences at school. This movie is an adaptation of a play. It really shows. They do a pretty good job of figuring out how to take something that happens on a stage and have some scenes happen outdoors and have some scenes happen, um, elsewhere, get some variety, um, in it. But the dead giveaway for the play, there's really two things, um, and these aren't bad, but two things that make it obvious that this was a play, was first, um, its uh, fascination with its own characters and its uh, investment in its own characters as the dramatic unit um, of the play, right? This is uh, um, a movie that is really into sort of telling us about these characters and revealing more and more and showing us the characters really just being themselves. This is the drama um, of the movie, wondering if the characters will keep careening towards uh, their... Uh, uh, some inevitable end, uh, or if they will change in some way, and whatnot. Um, like a lot of plays or movies based on plays, the sort of decisive moments uh, in the plot are non-obvious from the beginning. This is not a big war movie where you're pretty certain there will be <clears throat> a battle at the end or something along those lines. Instead, this is a movie about some people in a house, and it's not totally clear what the climax um, will be, but there is, uh, you know, you sort of wander around, you follow the characters for a while, and then there is you sort of come to a bit of a climactic um, moment eventually. So the characters are, are one of the things. The other thing is that the movie tends to be pretty resistant. Uh, what do I mean by this? Well, the opposite would be a movie that's very facile or something that has obvious themes, obvious ideas, obvious metaphors, things really in your face um, as a didactic uh, thrust in the film. Well, I find that a lot of plays and a lot of things based on plays are a bit different. They tend... Uh, to not, it, it tends not to have, uh, uh, well, it tends to be less virtuous to stick the message right in the faces of the audience. Um, but instead, the goal is maybe to generate something that you talk about on the way home that is sort of less clear cut and whatnot. And this movie is definitely, uh, definitely meets that. So whereas for some other classic movies that I've uh, reviewed on this channel, I could maybe summarize sort of the ideological uh, thrust of the film in a couple sentences, or there might be some central metaphor. Um, in this movie, things are much less clear, but I will touch on some themes, and in some ways, there may be a metaphor um, in the title and whatnot. We can talk about that a little bit. In general, like I said, these are not flaws. These are just hallmarks of movies made from plays. I will say there is sometimes a danger um, that, uh, that a movie will spend too much time, a movie in this category will spend too much time just sort of lavishing in its own characters and whatnot, and won't really go anywhere, and this movie is slightly at risk of that. I remember looking at the uh, timestamp 42 minutes into the movie and realizing nothing has happened in this movie yet, and to be honest, I ended up watching this movie over about three days, not because it's particularly dull, but just because of anomalies in my personal and professional life, but it is not a particularly gripping um, movie in some ways, and in some ways it's a difficult movie to watch, and I'll touch on why. The other thing that's kind of interesting um, to think about is that this is a movie about... Um, the lower middle class, um, about real life, the real world, the real struggles of everyday people and whatnot. But it's a movie created by Paul Newman and his family, essentially. And you might wonder if they are, what, what their interest is in ordinary people. Um, this is a theme in the movie Ordinary People as well. I'm wondering if this is really um, an authentic movie or if it's more of a vehicle, right? And here, of course, the idea would be that it's a vehicle for Joanne Woodward to be an amazing actress. And I mean, Joanne Woodward is a good actress and does a good job in this, but sometimes there are movies that are sort of created for a star to act in and whatnot. And you just wonder with this movie if that was where they were going to some extent. And you wonder, what is her, what should we really think about her sort of impression of the normal, the average woman and whatnot? Um, interesting to think about. But besides all of that, the movie itself, um, what's it about? Well, like I said, it's a, it's a family, a single mother, um, and her two kids. It is not a harmonious family 
not a harmonious relationships um, and not a harmonious time. One of the early themes in the movie, I think, is the uh, has something to do with the idea of adults being older versions of children. Um, and in particular, this character that Joanne Woodward plays is a troubled character. Um, at some points in the movie, she's alluded to as crazy, but the movie doesn't really go all in um, on that kind of thing. I don't think the, the storyline is, yes, here's a crazy woman by any means, um, but she's a woman with fears and with fragilities and whatnot. And those are some of the defining characteristics of being a kid, aren't they? Hmm. Her children seem to have some of the same things, maybe a grit to them as well, maybe a toughness or whatnot, but that's sort of an early um, an early theme, uh, is seeing some of the behavior, some of the self-destructive behavior go across generations and whatnot. And in general, a theme throughout the movie is the cyclical nature um, of generations and whatnot, the influence of one on the next. A question you ask yourself many a time while watching this movie is, wow, I can't have, hmm, this isn't going to end up as a question, but something you think to yourself a number of times is, yikes, this would be a hard place to grow up. This would be a hard house to grow up in. And what would you end up like if you did? Um, and whatnot. So that's another sort of theme and whatnot. In sort of tandem with this generational conflict and whatnot in the disharmonious family, we get a pretty stirring portrait of general social disintegration and whatnot, alienation at every level. A family that's has difficulty talking. Um, but beyond that, there's some uh, there's some more characters where this sort of comes into play. There's the neighbor um, who really isn't very interested in talking who, to Joanne Woodward's character, Beatrice, um, I think is her name. Uh, there's also, so an interesting uh, piece of the movie is that the uh, Beatrice, to make some money, it's unclear if she's employed, doesn't seem like it, so to make some money to support her family, she rents out one of the rooms in the houses. Now, renting out a room in the house means that you sort of care for this room uh, in a particular way. And that's an interesting portrait of domesticity, which would be another theme um, of this movie to some extent. The idea of sort of preserving one room, one bedroom in the house, keeping it pristine and clean while everything is sort of uh, <laughs> falling apart around it and whatnot is an interesting, yeah, it's an interesting idea th that what what things we hold on to and whatnot and what things we invest uh, we, we have our own identities invested in and attached to and whatnot. And in some cases, maybe it is this room. It might also be dressing a certain way at certain times and whatnot, acting classy in a certain way at certain times, even as a lot of other things are going wrong or even as there are a lot of challenges, there's meaning in these certain things. And then one of these is this room, right? Well, okay, so they eventually rent the room, not a spoiler, uh, because you can't really even spoil this movie, um, except maybe the end, the very end. Um, but... Uh, this also happens at the beginning, they rent the room out to an elderly lady who is, uh, whose daughter uh, doesn't want to take direct care of anymore. And it turns out that they've actually rented the room out to a series um, of aging people, most of whom have passed on. Um, and this, you learn this after having the family set up as not a particularly empathetic place, it seems. A place with fears and fragilities and where those things seem to be all-consuming and produce a sense of selfishness, um, really. And then you learn that they're going to be looking after this old lady and whatnot. But like I said, this is an example of social disintegration and alienation. Why is that? Well, it's because the old lady uh, is basically being shunned, kicked out by her daughter and whatnot, who lives in the same city, uh, but just doesn't really want to take care of her uh, anymore and whatnot. And the, th there's that relationship, uh, which is not a major focal point of the movie, but the, this grandmother character sticks around for quite a while, and her sort of loneliness and disconnectedness and whatnot leaves, I think, a lasting mark on the movie. Now, in addition to this, the daughter um, of uh, Beatrice, um, this is uh, Nell Potts' character, I think, although I'm not, uh, I can't 100% remember which daughter is which, um, but I think this is uh, Nell Newman um, in the movie. Uh, she is pretty terrified of elderly people <laughs> and uh, old age in general, which adds another interesting uh, uh, sliver to all of this. So this movie has a great title, The Effect of Gamma Rays on Man in the Moon Marigolds. Does that have anything to do with the movie? Well, not really. It alludes to a science exper experiment that the younger daughter um, is doing. She has a supportive science teacher at school. This part of the film does not age well at all um, or it was hard for me to read, at least. I think that the behavior of the science teacher would be quite suspicious these days. And it's not clear. Maybe maybe that is the point. 
is that he's supposed to be a bit sketchy in the movie itself. Um, but I'm not sure. The play was written by someone named Paul Zindel, or Zindel, who was a high school science teacher. And so you wonder if this is him having written himself into the movie. And if so, you would really doubt that, uh, well, into the play and then subsequently into the movie. You, you would, you'd be somewhat surprised if it was supposed to be sort of a sketchy portrayal. Um, so the science teacher may be a little bit off-putting. Point is, he f tries to foster some of the scientific interest of the younger daughter who pursues this science, sort of completely disconnected um, from uh, her family, from the world, uh, as some sort of refuge and whatnot. Um, and her experiment is, uh, involves planting man-in-the-moon marigolds, right, type of flower, uh, the seeds of which uh, have been exposed to radiation and whatnot. Now, in some ways, this is a very minor part of the movie, but you might say that this is a metaphor for part of the movie and whatnot. Some of these ideas of the cyclical nature of family, of uh, sort of a very trying home life and whatnot, could be equated to some sort of nuclear corruption. Okay, nuclear family. Yeah. <laughs> um, the movie resists being reduced easily to this metaphor and whatnot, but you can, you can make it work, I think, um, thinking about the movie as some sort of uh, uh, corruption or something along those lines. Now, the specter of modernity that comes through nuclear power and gamma rays and whatnot is also a pretty interesting um, uh, contrast to the way that this family actually lives and whatnot. And so you could also maybe make some point about maybe the movie is, um, is trying to contrast sort of fancy new modern stuff with a very sort of uh, stuck in the past. Um, well, not really stuck in the past, but, but a family who has not seen the benefits um, of these things. So this movie doesn't sound that cheery, perhaps, and it really isn't. I uh, sort of just watched this movie because I thought the title sounded kind of fun, and I was curious what it would be about. And this is really not a fun movie, uh, by any means, which should really be right up my alley because I like not fun movies most of the time. Um, hard to empathize with many of the characters. Hard to watch them uh, go through their lives. Um, and... A movie that is almost resplendent in how dour it is. In some ways, it reminds me slightly of the movie The Last Picture Show, um, which also really sort of lavishes in the uh, uh, in the bleakness um, of things in some ways, but which but through which there are also some glimmers of uh, uh, connection and and humanity and whatnot. This movie doesn't really have the glimmers of connection and humanity. It mostly just has the lavishing in bleakness um, and whatnot. But I will say. Uh, that despite the movie sort of moving along pretty slowly and whatnot, not having much to relate to for large parts of the movie or connect to um, in some ways, by the time the end rolls around, I actually do find the movie to be fairly moving um, and whatnot and to make a significant impression um, and whatnot. So I wouldn't say that it is incisively um, bleak in the ways that maybe some bleak movies that I really like um, are like some of the Hirokazu Kurita movies um, or something like this, or that's a really the, the parallel we should be giving is some of the John Cassavetes movies, um, which are the same time frame and whatnot, in which seemingly, almost certainly, uh, influence this movie or at least belong to a similar um, sort of movement and whatnot. But where Cassavetes is particularly incisive in his bleakness, this movie doesn't quite have the same zing and whatnot, doesn't quite have the same incision, feels a little bit more like just trying to be sort of a resistant, more theatrical thing and a vehicle um, for Joanne Woodward. But like I said, she does a good job in this movie, as do the kids um, and whatnot. And the movie does have a lot of sort of interesting, vivid character moments, a lot of interesting sayings. In some way, the script is uh, good in that it sort of captures these quirky characters and whatnot. And there are a lot of interesting mannerisms um, on display and a lot of interesting sayings and whatnot that would almost be humorous if they weren't so sort of bleak um, and such. And so in some ways, the script is pretty strong, um, I think. And it does raise some sort of interesting themes, like I said, sort of resistant um, to putting it into uh, a nice little box or tying it up with a ribbon or something like that. But overall, um, a fairly a fairly interesting uh, movie. So this is the effect of Gamma Rays on Man in the Moon Marigolds. I've said this title three times and gotten it right every time, which is a bit of a miracle. Um, it's a film from 1972 with an interesting cast. Um, and it's a, an interesting movie. 
I would say if you're if it sounds sort of interesting and you haven't watched some of John Cassavetti's movies, like the parallel that would maybe be most obvious is uh, a woman under the uh, 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 influence. Um, watch that first. I I can't remember what year that came out. It might come have been after this. Um, but either way, um, this movie sort of invites comparisons to that in some ways. Um, and that movie is like 10 million times better. <laughs> but this is an interesting, very 70s um, movie that offers a really different look at home life and whatnot. Um, certainly not a, a, a starry picture of uh, modernity. Um, by any means, kind of worth checking out, kind of interesting. Um, so maybe maybe go for it.